we were looking at two things. So let's get back again to where we were. Based on the same thing, actually, I think we tried this passage. Paragraph, you got it? You tell me to go to the Tena. Reading book. Bibucha, you watch what about this? I'm leaving for a. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bula, bula, bula. How about this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Drivers and the team. Okay. Yani Rutsi, the last sentence. A hey, drivers and opinion. Okay, the very first sentence say yeah, it's a topic sentence. Okay, you can go people and the frustrate you. Got it? China. China. Okay. China. When you're going to read this? Sir, already bought it, sir. Sir, so what? A what? A glass sum of what? Okay. What? Sir, so glass sum of what? Glass. Glass for me. Suppose to glass. Hola. Just you got it. Go. I'm really frustration. Go. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. The just you got it. Sir. All right. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Let's please move this window. Let's the window right here. Uh, sorry. Can't put you where are we? I was looking at this. This is sir. Okay, anybody, what is it about? Who would like to try this? I was thinking about there are other boys. I got a lot of main idea find out going on. Reading go. I did this thing in boys. I got me for again. About the main idea. Anybody?
Robin? Yes, sir. My goodness. Kati, sabay jana. So quiet. Now, just next to him, sir. Mother, I can't believe it. Just a Jangu ke ba video the mera. Robin, you tell me, what is it about? Sir, never ending data and uh, it's difficulty in management. Okay. All right, Jangu, you try. You're reading now. Ah, Jango, you're reading now. La Heather, Heather, I should say. Football. What is that? Yeah, you, Baba, you tell me. What is this paragraph about? Jango, the port, this is the port of Goros. What is it about? Um. <laughs> Internet electronic mailer to buy my Okay, take us Internet electronic mail. Uh, Bijay? Finding the information through Internet electronic mail is okay. Finding information through the Internet is. What, what internet, uh -huh. internet, electronic mail, and voice box. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Jango? Ah, Jango, yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll get back to you later. Chicha. Um I will call it try Gosha. Bibutsa, right. Bibutsa. Sir. Oh, video call you uh, turn on the video. I come up with the good ticket that they are the turn on one meal day. No, it's too much. Can it is the restrictions? Are there? I want your laptop with the school legor that they were okay. La teacher Labanan. Okay, turn on one meal and tell me more about this paragraph. Kitcher, what is it about? Um, sir, um, sir, um. It is about the facts and figures and how mm -hmm. how it is impo like um, how it is hard to cope up with the information. Um, it is about okay, okay, okay. That's that's enough. That's enough. You don't have to go beyond. That. Okay, quiet. Sharmila. I think it's about information which we get from the internet. Ani, is there something more? Is it only about mm. information that we get from the internet? Is there something more here? Tetine, oilelai? Okay, let's say Timra answer oilela tetine, sir. Trishla, Trishla. Um, sir, I think it's about oilara oile cost to say like information go to. Oila banda. I let's say, ekdom ei man share matiyo facts and figures and informations or rupao na easy ani cost to say unsa ke oila banda. Cost to unsa? You tell me. Cost to unsa? Um. But kine bari oila se abo like jati information bai pani alka easy unjeo na. Taro I let's say written information matiyo the na it's like internet electronic mail ani sabbe bolo unsa ke. 
Okay. All right. Now, let me ask another question to all of you. Let me amale pahila sodeko I asked you about the main idea. Eh? Let me ask you about the organization. Is this, is this paragraph based on cause and effect? Is there a cause and an effect here? Is there a cause and effect here? Anybody? No, sir. Trishla, is there cause and effect? Organization? Mm, I don't know, sir. Okay. Bibhuta, is there a cause and an effect here? No, I don't know. I'm confused. Okay. Mandeep, is there a cause and effect? It might be. I'm not sure. Prabhin, is, is it based on cause and effect? I don't think so, sir. I'm asking you people this question because your answer was more or less correct. You all mentioned about how, uh, compared to the past, nowadays there's excess information, right? And then how it's so getting so difficult to deal with this excess information. So if you look at this paragraph, it's all about excess information and people's difficulty in dealing with it. So caused by excess information, effect by people's difficulty in dealing with it. So definitely, this paragraph is based on cause and effect. So where's the cause and where's the effect? Right in here is the cause. The effect starts from here. This is the effect. How about this sentence? This sentence is a linking sentence. This sentence links the cause with the effect. So technically we call it a transitional sentence. <coughs> <coughs> so that's a transitional sentence. So remember, when we read, this is what exactly we need to be aware of, right? Anybody can just read words. Reading words is not a problem. We've been reading words since the nursery days. A for apple, B for ball. C for cat, now when I see for cartoon, moti and bottle. So you've been doing that, but then our altis machi, you've got to go a little beyond it. We have to look at some technical aspects. And the technical aspects here generally would refer to the, the main idea. So the main idea of the topic of this paragraph is about excess information, All right? and how people find it difficult to deal with excess information. So if you simplify, it's about information overload. Excess information and the difficulty in dealing with it. And how is it organized? Cause and effect. So let's take a look at it. Daily people are being bombarded with a mountain of facts and figures. At one time, look at this, at one time. When it's in the past, all right. It was possible to deal with information. Now, 
presently. Office workers find themselves assailed. Assail means attacked, literally attacked. Not just by written information, but by other sources of modern information. So in the past, there was only written information. <clears throat> now you have information in the form of electronic, electronic information. So information could be through the internet, electronic mail, voice boxes, answering machines, okay? So you, you have a lot of information. And because of all of this information, what happens? The repercussions are grave. The repercussions, the results, the consequences are grave. Grave, serious. So grave can have <coughs> several meanings. One meaning of grave is where a person is buried, right? The other grave means serious. The patient is in grave condition. It can also mean that. So the results are serious. What are the results? This is the result. There's a constant flood of information and people don't know how to react to it. So this definitely is based on cause and effect. Okay. Clear everybody? Are you listening? Yes, sir. Okay, besides Bibuta, everybody turn on the video, please. Video sir, of course, boss sir. Hmm. I think my Nida go ki ki I don't know. Hmm. Jango, is this clear? Bujhe. Jango. Yes, sir. Okay. Cause and effect. Now, I mean, only 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 garu ma jaan chahiye. So slowly, I'll I'll you know, I'm 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 going through a little bit more challenging material. Now, check this. My question to you is, why would the author use such words, bombarded with a mountain of facts and figures, a constant flood of detail? Just say, the first sentence, daily people are being bombarded with a mountain of facts and figures. Instead of this, the writer could have written in a more simpler way. The writer could have written, daily people receive lots of information or huge amount of information. But instead of writing, daily people receive huge amount of information or lots of information. Why would the writer replace such simple words with bombarded mountains, constant flood of detail? Anybody? Give it a try. There must be a reason, no? Every writer has a purpose. Yes, so why would uh, the writer use such words? Now, if you notice here, you don't have a topic sentence. Hey, you go practice this, though, you don't have a topic sentence. Oh, by the way, the topic sentence can be anywhere, isn't it? Uh, you might have a paragraph with or without a topic sentence. And unlike what you find on the net, which says the very first sentence is the topic sentence, which is absolutely wrong, you might have a topic sentence is a first sentence. You might have more than one topic sentence. The topic sentence could be right in the middle, could be at the end. All right, so don't fall for those silly um, ideas that you find on the net. Now, why does the author use this word? Question I have. Hey, is because, I mean, you see, there's a, a you know, mm, hang on there. Okay, uh, 
I'm going to write uh, a word that's very important in this case. So in this case, it's all about imagery, or we call it a bunch of Now, why would the author use the word bombarded, let's say? There must be a reason, as I've already told you. Okay? Is, the writer could have written, daily people receive lots of information. But a lot of information, if, just the words lots of information, is not sufficient to tell how much information. All right, they were by now, so that word is a failure. Secondly, the writer could have used a lot of um, figures, data. Every day people receive so many gigabytes of information. Right? You have to write so many zeros. I don't know how good you are in counting. For me, beyond five zeros, I get confused. And I'm sure a lot of people do get confused. When number per se, five zeros, six, seven zeros, I just copy them to me. So, Adding figures, numbers will not give a good thing or good idea. So the challenge for the writer here is, how do I further explain how much information I have? So what the writer is doing is, basically the writer is using imageries, or we call it picture painters. So what the writer is basically doing is, he wants the reader to imagine a mountain. Not from far. You are in a poker at the Fiwa Lake Ma, a beautiful lake map, Annapurna Range. Looks so beautiful. Mountain from far looks beautiful. But when you're up close, when you're very up close to a mountain, it's a very dangerous place. Right? You have this mountain altitude for sickness and so uh, it's very cold. You get frostbites, you lose your fingers, nose, ears, right? You can die because of the cold. Avalanche around so it's a very hostile environment. So, the writer wants the reader to imagine a mountain very close by. The close one's on the huge near the mountain. And he, the reader then will be able to imagine how much information we receive. But a mountain go size go information, say we receive on a daily basis. And then the writer hopes that the reader will be able to understand how much information in a better way. All right. So you say writer let's say. You, these are some of the tools that writers use in order to paint a bit better picture, in order to give a better understanding of the writing. So this is called, this technique is called picture painting. And then furthermore, last mile, the writer again wants the reader to imagine that the information is like flood waters. Imagine right now in the plains, there's been a lot of flooding. Okay, up in the hills, there's been a lot of flooding. The river overflows, okay? Your entire settlement, including a house, is submerged. You've got a boat, but you don't know which direction you should go to. Because all around you find water, and the sky meets uh, the water far in the horizon. You're completely lost. You can't find a direction. You don't have a compass. And now everything that you own is underwater. And you don't know how to deal with it. So you're doing the natural phenomenon, Arunza. These are things we already know, right? <clears throat> and um, so uh, the author compares. Author wants the reader to think about flood, not as a flood of water, a flood of information. And in that information, we are completely lost. One more word to use up, bombarded. Bombarded would mean when bombs are dropped, and when bombs are dropped, people get killed. So information, you know, it doesn't kill you, but... It, it really confuses you. There's so many words. Assailed in a negative way. Bombarded is negative. Assailed. Assailed means attacked. So <clears throat> when a person attacks you, he's an assailant. The purpose of, uh, the intent of the person is to kill you, is that he's an assailant. And if it's a political murder, we call it an assassination. So remember all the words are related to that. But at the end, the point I'm trying to make here is, the author, in order to explain things better and 
in order to help the reader understand what he's trying to say, uses such words. And these are what he calls as imageries. All right. And fiction writers are very good in using imageries. When you read a novel, like for example, uh, for almost all Nepalese people, they would have read Muna Mukha. Uh, just a Japanese example, I can say. Uh, most, one of the most popular Japanese novels that almost all Japanese young people read, not older people, young people read, is Haruki Murakami, the Norwegian Wood Woman. Right? That was translated into English. Norwegian Wood, uh, that's the novel, by Haruki Murakami. Why? Why is it that? Because these are stories that are so popular, Munamadan and so on. And why are they so popular? Because the authors, they use, whether it's Murakami or Lakshmi Prasad Devkota, they use a lot of imageries. And you can, you as a reader, you can imagine the pain of separation of Muna and Mada. You know? So, and how do you understand that pain? This is all because of words. So this is called picture painting. When sending out a painter lay, the painter will use a paintbrush to paint a picture. The painter go out a tool by a paintbrush and color. Out a photographer go tool by a camera. So with the help of the camera, the photo photographer captures pictures. Out a, out a writer go tool by a, simply words. So with the help of the words, he tries to paint a beautiful picture. Our altism is to guard on the passage eh, about uh, imageries, and not at least the first and second passage. But third passage, Matei, okay, sometimes you do have a few words indicating imageries or picture painting or words used in a rhetorical way. All right. So you're somebody by rhetorical devices. Okay. Let's try this. Mandeep, Bado? Yes, sir. Mandeep? Okay, you tell me now, Mandeep. What is it about? It's about failure is a state of success. Okay. Failure is a step to success. And other words you're going to be 
वी हैव टू फेल इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव सक्सेस है ना इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ फेलियर इन अचीविंग सक्सेस ऐसे आया फुर बा मेन आइडिया क्यों हो व्हाट इज द मेन आइडिया ये पैराग्राफ को तो गारो छ फूल भाई तो हिंदी में भन न मैथिली में भन नो गिव मी इंग्लिश प्लीज यस पूर्वा किन फुर्बा अंग्रेजी बोलना तस्तु प्रिपेयर कर लाली में भन ल ठीक आई थिंक अब यो फेलियर भाई अब गिव अप अंग्रेजी में भन तो अंग्रेजी में Yeah, we could say that, yeah. I mean, in all, in order to be successful, we need to fail. Or failure is very important to achieve success. Is that good? Okay. That's that's what it is. Okay. Take care. So let's say uh, the main topic here is about how we need to fail in order to achieve success. Right? Someone would say the importance of failure to achieve success. You can have different sentences. Okay. Now, I want you to identify the two most important sentences. Oh, first one, Tio. Ina, Tio. Ina, forget it, forget it. What I'm going to say is, uh, are there any examples here? Can you see examples? Okay. I'm going to ask this question to Bibut Sir and Trishla. Trishla and Bibut Sir, do you find any examples? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me, give me. Sir, um, okay. Point of view. Like, sir, the origins of actor, any book, go printing or guide. Okay, that's one. And yes, Bibut sir, Trishla. Okay, Trishla, I'm telling you. uh there's one and and then how many examples can you find there trishla by the way how many examples two two can you tell me once again what those examples are um the what that means um authors or writers have to go through before to um आफ्नो बुक रिलीज गर्नु अगाडि अनि अर्को चाहिँ एक्टर्सहरु एक्ज्याक्टली सो दिस आर टु एक्जामपल्स राइट सो एक्जामपल्स व्हाट वी कॉल द सपोर्टिंग डिटेल्स सो दिस इज अबाउट एन दिस इज अबाउट अ बेस्ट सेलर बेस्ट सेलिंग नोवेलिस्ट बट हाउ द बेस्ट सेलिंग नोवेलिस्ट वाज रिफ्यूज्ड सो मेनी टाइम्स हाउ ही फेल्ड इमेजिन जेके राउलिंग एंड हैरी पॉटर ओके जेके राउलिंग अ सिंगल मदर was jobless she was living on unemployment benefit that the unemployment benefit in zanda na when you unemployed the government supports you so she was living on unemployment benefit because she was totally unemployed and moreover she was a single mother and then she wrote those books and then people told her can you make a living by writing children's book you got to get a job you can't write and you can't make a living by by you know writing children's book and she was rejected so many times and then by and by to last ko jun jai um publishally uh, say publish kare even the man refused her but uh, she she had left the man had left the manuscript on the table okay the publisher 
his niece, there was this kid who came by, she picked up the book, she started reading, she found it so interesting, she couldn't put it down. And the man said, all right, he has a jackpot. Kids are really, and then it was published. The rest is history. Now she's a millionaire, right? She's a celebrity. So let's take a look. Let's think about J.K. Rowling and how she was refused. So she failed numerous times. She failed terribly, right? But at the end, she achieved success. And then there's the other example of an actor, all right, who had to uh, give many auditions, all right, before she finally became a star. So these are examples. Now, I've already told you, examples are what we call as supporting details. Examples do not support the main, I mean, examples are not the main idea. They simply support the main idea. So, you read the example, like he explained what said, that we have to fail in order to achieve success. All right, the example. Now, the next exercise is, I want all of you to think about the two most important sentences. You have to do it a sentence, sir. They're the most important. Chido. Kuli Chado answer one, sir. Okay? More food mandu and other thima like the momo patam this. Food mandu. Kuli Chado one, say answer. The relationship between success and failure is more intricate. Um. People should be taught the value of failure and how to use it as a stepping stone to success. Okay. Uh, more emphasis obviously needs to be laid upon the necessity to fail in order to achieve success. Very good. Very good, John. Excellent. That's very good. Okay. So the two most important sentences are you, okay? Instead, people should be taught. So let me uh, highlight this sentence. <clears throat> okay, and the last sentence. Now, we all know our topic, I'm looking at the main topic, the importance of failure in order to achieve success. The necessity to fail in order to achieve success. Or if you look at this sentence, instead people should be taught the value of failure and how to use it as a stepping stone to success. Here, the sentence discusses both about success, failure, and the relationship between them. The last sentence again discusses uh, failure, success, all right, and the relationship between them. So these are the two most important sentences. Now, um, I think Furwale mentioned got the first sentence. Okay? First sentence is also very close. Okay, the first sentence is also very close because it talks about both success and failure, but it does not inform us what kind of relationship is there between success and failure. Whereas you do it a sentence, it tells us exactly the kind of relationship between success and failure. And hence, these two are the topic sentence. So, when we analyze the entire passage, I'm looking at it, you some example by you, you know? So examples cannot be our main topic sentence. Yanir, instead of the first sentence, in between, we have a topic sentence and we have at the end. So when you check the net, you have a lot of those long ideas, okay? Um, a lot of websites are they, and it's been there for a long time, long, long time. Remember, I've been teaching Altes and Tofu for 19 years. And I've been saying this, the same kind of strategy for a very long time. You know, and the strategy says, read the first sentence of every paragraph. Because the first sentence is a topic sentence. They simply assume that the first sentence has to be the topic sentence. Not always. And by the way, uh, you might have a paragraph without a topic sentence. So those assumptions are completely wrong. And then you might have a topic sentence right in between. And then moreover, you might have more than one topic sentence. So please don't fall for those traps. All right? It doesn't really work. What really works is to start reading. Read and try to locate the topics. Uh, try to locate. If there's a topic sentence, fine. All right? So when you do a reading, 
Who know the paragraph for me? Okay, ask yourself, are there examples? Do I, do, I, do I find examples there? Number one. Number two, is there a topic sentence? Examples on Sajilu Potu. Topic sentence on the other Sajilu Potu. But you might have a lot of paragraphs without examples and topic sentences. So in that case, the Junta overall main idea is it's not directly mentioned through a topic sentence, it's implied, it's indirectly mentioned. But, uh, um, what I'm going to do right now is let me show you something about implied, okay, topic sentence, implied question. So, as a case, as a video, you know, sir. Sushla? Hmm. So let's look at implied. What's the family about topic sentence that wasn't implied? Okay. Uh, it was actually uh, not implied. It was given uh, uh, the main topic sentence. Today we're going to look at implied topic sentence, one that's indirectly mentioned. And uh, implied topic sentence must be direct to them. Okay, so let's focus on it. There are not too many of it. There are just a few of it. Okay, take a look at this. Start with this, the first one. We're looking at this one. Sushla, you need to see the background of the photo. The wall ko pictures are But I can't see you. I can just see your forehead. It's all that I'm reading to. Uh-huh. Oh, you're reading through that thing. Uh, you mean uh, your mobile? Sushla? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, all right. Okay. So, uh, see, there are lots of contradictions, eh? We often told he who hesitates is lost. But we also warn, look before you leap. So yeah, opposite way. Most of us have heard the saying, out of sight, out of mind. But then we hear, absence makes the heart, uh, heart grow fond. Everyone talks about love at first sight. But then someone reminds us, marry in haste, repent at leisure. So marry in haste, Repent and leisure. It's all very confusing. So you sub sub words are layered. Right? If you combine it together, it's the main idea. Keep in talk. What is the topic? Anyone? Vijay. So we, we shouldn't have to do hurry on doing something. Sorry? So we shouldn't have to do hurry on doing something else. You're only looking at this probably. You have to take all these words. You have to take sayings or sayings and proverbs. They're opposite, no? They're opposite. Love at first sight, but then it also says Mary and he has to re repent in pleasure uh, in, in leisure, right? But then we also say out of sight, out of mind, but then we also say absence makes the heart grow fond, fonder. So lots of opposites out there. So based on it, what do you think is the main idea? Okay, anyway, you've tried, Vijay, um, what about you, Yuraj? Praveen, Yubraj? Huh? Huh? 
Va bene. Everything has its opposite um opposite what um uh, I don't like this one thing and another opposes it uh I'm going to put it in words. <laughs> Try to put it in words. That's yeah. the challenges. I'm forcing you all to put it in words because first you think and then you speak. Right? So when you think, you speak, speaking go by you. You think and you write, that's writing. So whether it's speaking or writing, it all first comes to thinking. What you think, how you formulate. So the more you think, okay, the better you get at it. So thinking is something very important. Okay, Pravin, go on. So, Kate, here. No, sir, I can't find the exact correct word. No. Okay. Anyone would like to try? Anybody? Jango? Um, as like we can see through the paragraph sentence, is it a controversial controversy kind of which is uncertainty to I guess okay we'll get back to that later let's try the second one this one yeah, you can't go wrong nobody can go wrong with the second one Okay, who would like to try this? Second one. This can mean I decay with the second one. It's simple, yeah? it's the easiest thing anybody can do. Go on, answer me, otherwise I'm going to shut this class. I'm, I'm going to turn it off. Different countries have different currency. Different countries have different currency. currencies. With different names. <clears throat> exactly. But different. It is. So currency has got different names. Money has got different names. Yeah. United States dollar, Australia, New Zealand dollar, Korea won, pound, and so on. Peso, Zai. Let's try the last one. 
एकदम सिंपल है इस तो कुरा रहे दिस वेरी सिंपल राइट आई शुड बी स्पून फीडिंग यू अब तीन दिन पच्चीस बनी योग करें हमसे आई एम लूजिंग पेशेंस आई माइट एस वेल टर्न ऑफ द क्लास एंड रिलैक्स सो लेट्स ट्राई द लास्ट वन Okay, last one. Myths and facts about exercises. Yeah, you could say the myths and facts about exercises. Advantages of doing exercise regularly. Ah, uh, sorry, Vijay. Advantages of doing exercise regularly. Ah, uh, advantages matter, sir. Disadvantages matter. Lots of. Misconception about exercise. Wrong idea, sir. Misconception. Conception is an idea. Miss. The moment you add a word, miss, when you opposite one, sir, neither. I know. Understood, misunderstood. I know. Place, misplace. But uh, take, mistake. The English language, man, see. A lot of negative words are formed by adding the prefix miss, m i s. This D I S this U N un and I N in un in dismiss lot of negative words for interested disinterested integration disintegration opposite words isn't it? Okay, so uh, it's not just about advantages. There are lots of misconceptions about exercises. So yeah, it's a, it's it's about uh, some of the myths and misconceptions about exercises. So then, what about the first one? Well, it through paragraph or the body segregacy, it should not have been so difficult. So let's go on to the first one. So I think there's a <clears throat> there is things or one believes or one so that I think it just applies. According with the time 